The discovery moment is actually quite hard to describe. It's a culmination of hope, of hard work, of complex teamwork. And the moment when you realize the potential of a compound, it's those moments that keep you, keep you coming back to work. The scientific breakthroughs behind protein degradation were completely unexpected. The story really began uh, two decades ago when BMS was one of the first companies to begin the study of immunomodulatory drugs in blood cancers such as uh, multiple myeloma. And they've had a significant impact um, in both the overall survival as well as the quality of life for patients. So they've become the standard of care and continue to have a profound impact um, for patients' lives. At the time, we knew that they had these sort of immunomodulatory effects, but we had very little insight into exactly how these molecules were working. They were delivering on benefit to patients, um, but really the details, the exact molecular mechanism of how they were working um, was a mystery for some time. Back in 2010, scientists in Japan discovered that some of these molecules, the imids, were binding to a component in the cell's protein recycling system and protein degradation system. The specific protein is called cerebron. It's a very important component of the cell's protein degradation system. Every cell in our body has the pathways to synthesize proteins, to make proteins, and to degrade proteins in order to keep the balance of protein levels intact. In the field, we call that protein homeostasis, the balance of protein levels. It was an absolute shock, the discovery from the group in Japan. Many groups had been trying to understand the mechanism of action of the imid compounds and trying to discover the molecular target, the protein that the imids bound to, the fact that the group in Japan discovered the binding partner to be Cerebron was a huge surprise. Now, the story got really interesting because around 2014, a number of really important publications came out from Harvard scientists, internal research at BMS, and also our Japanese colleagues, in which we began to understand that not only were these compounds binding to Cerebron, but in fact, they were actual molecular glues. It was a light bulb moment. We suddenly went from not knowing why these compounds worked to now understanding that they worked through this incredibly intricate mechanism where we were recruiting disease-causing proteins to the cerebellum ubiquitin ligase and inducing their protein turnover and their destruction. The impact of understanding how the imid compound works, it gave rise to a whole new field of targeted protein degradation. And really there was an early understanding that targeted protein degradation is represented by the imid compounds might in fact represent essentially the tip of the iceberg for what that new modality could bring to patients. At the time, when you see like just an incredible, beautiful piece of scientific research, drug discovery and clinical development, um, it's something that is it's quite awe-inspiring. As we begin to understand what are sort of the rules of the road for targeted protein degradation, it allows you to begin to think about the medical problem you want to solve, the disease-causing protein that's affiliated with it, and now perhaps intentionally design a molecule, the chemical structure required to create that completely novel molecular glue to recruit that disease-causing protein. We now have several investigational protein degraders in clinical trials. We take two approaches towards protein degradation. Our next generation of compounds are called Cerebron E3 ligase modulators. These act as molecular glues, much like the imid compounds. The second approach that we take to protein degradation is to make a three-part molecule called a ligand-directed degrader. The three parts of this molecule are a binder to cerebron, so much like 
an imid compound, a linker, and then a third component that binds to an important therapeutic target. We really have the privilege of being able to build on many decades now of, of not just the scientific insight into how these molecules work, but we also importantly understand what it takes to take those nascent molecules and turn them into medicines. BMS really has been expanding in a number of important areas to deliver on the promise of, of targeted protein degradation. New modalities do not come along very often. And so when they do, um, there is, there's, there's great promise. And there's also a, a, a phase in which the field is going through this incredible sort of rapid and creative expansion. And so there's just tremendous potential right now. And it's one of the main motivations for, for our BMS scientists to begin to push the limits and to rapidly iterate and to drive forth novel medications for patients who need them most.